Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a preview of the 1st Infantry Division, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Normandy 44 DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so a big thanks to them. Also please remember that this was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look but we're going to be jumping straight on in. As usual we'll be looking at all of the units available and putting together a quick deck. Uh, but as you might notice the tabs here are kind of wild. So let's start on the recon tab. Now the recon tab is really interested in this one because it follows over from Normandy 44 where you can't get any recon infantry in phase A and for what is a very limited recon tab it's kind of crazy. So definitely something you have to work around uh, but starting off with the jeep here in the recon tab is available in phase A uh, so that will be a supplement potentially. 6 available in A, 12 available in B. Radio recon, 50 cal. It's not a terrible vehicle. Usually one you'd avoid though in favour of Recon Infantry. And then the other one available in Phase 8 is the M8 for 8 and 12 availability. So this will be the, your other option for Phase A. Moving over to the Recon, we've got uh, the Recon Standard Unit. Two man with Thompsons, Jeep 30 cal and M20s are your other choices of transports. M20s are pretty useful to have around and uh, will give you more abundance of Recon vehicles. But otherwise, 8 available in B, 12 available in C at one vet. Then we've got the Scouts. Uh, these can also be brought in with the M20. So just a more chunky squad. Gets the two extra carbines. 6 available in B, 9 available in C at one vet. Finally, there's a Sniper. Two-man squad. Only one Sniper in the squad though. 4 available in B, 6 available in C. Snipers have been nerfed in this patch, so do be aware of that. Let's move on to the recon tab. Starting off with a unique unit here, the Assault Buster. This is a five-man squad with five M1 carbines. It gets a rocket gun, which is the same as the Gumia PM rocket gun, uh, which fires HE and infantry. It has similar damage and suppression to like a Molotov. Uh, the other thing that's cool about this unit though is it does also have a Willy P, which is the equivalent of a Molotov. So yeah. At close range against enemy infantry, this thing is actually going to be pretty handy to have around, but you will want to support it with other infantry because their strength is quite low. So they will probably get picked off if they're left alone. Next we have the Assault Fire Support. This is, I believe, another unique unit to this division. Um, six strength squad with four M1 carbines, two Browning machine guns. Um, these can only be brought in in phase A with one or two, two vets, uh, nine and six availability. And we have the basics which come in from phase B. Um, so this is again sort of similar to before where a lot of the infantry here can only be brought in from phase B. Like a lot of the standard infantry like all of these rifles are all phase B and even the engineers. And then you've got like um, sort of unique infantry in phase A that can only be brought in in phase A. But yeah, with the basics. Uh, 12 man squad with M1 Garands, M1 Carbines. Always a nice chunky squad to have around. 18, 24 availability. These aren't too bad for 20 points, to be honest, uh, in the row situation. Then we've got the Stonewallers. 8 man squad for 20 points, 7 M1 Garands, and the BAR. Honestly, like most of these units, like particularly like the Assault Pi um, Fire Support and the Stonewallers, these are almost overpriced for 20 points to do better than mine like your early phase infantry is going to be kind of trash then we move on to the engineer leader here which comes in at two vet which is really nice and they have a tnt so actually really nice to have a two vet leader which has tnt then we got the engineers available from b and c these are 12 and 18 availability um, these do get free vet because usually again it would be like 10 and 15 on the availability otherwise which would probably be even less than that so higher availability than usual and then rifles early 18 27 at one vet can be brought in with the gmc hmg which has a 50 cal on it not really worth it usually though 
Uh, then there's the Assault Breaches. These are available in Phase A. Really nice 11-man uh, close-range infantry squad because they have Shock. They also have TNT and four Thompsons. But on top of all of that, they also have a Smoke Grenade. Uh, smoke Grenade is really, really handy for these kinds of squads because it allows them to move through light cover in between uh, heavy cover unharassed which is great so yeah nice infantry squads for sure and six available of those um, is very nice for supplementing your early game and we have the assault leader now, these are only two available in phase a at two vet um, they get the springfield and bazooka then the rifles late which come in late <laughs> in phase C with the two BARs. Then there's assault teams, which are also available in phase A, another really, really good squad. Um, 10 M1 Garands, the two BARs, flamethrower, and again, smoke grenade, and the shock. So fantastic close range infantry that you get access to early on with decent availability. Uh, but yeah, your other units at the, at the top here, these ones are all a bit questionable in terms of cost efficiency. These assault units at the bottom though, the assault breacher, the assault team, definitely good value for money. Then we've got uh, rifles leader, four and six availability in phase B and C. Again, Springfield bazooka setup. Moving into the tank tab, not too much to see here. Um, you get M5A1 Stuarts available in phase A and B. M4A1 DDs available in phase A. And then your tanks are available in both A and C when it comes to the M4A1. So M4A1 leaders available in A and C, M4A1 available in A and C. So 6 and 18 availability for them. So you get no like phase B tanks really. Moving on to the support tab. We've got the M1919, which is the 30 cal, only available from phase B onwards. Same with the 50 cal. 8 and 12 availability at one vet. Three cards of GMC supplies are available in this deck. The M7DD, uh, this comes with the 105mm gun and 250 cows, really strong unit. And uh, yeah, fantastic for supporting in the early game for 45 points. M3 howitzer, available in A, B, and C. Then the M4105, which comes with that 110mm of frontal armor. Only available in A and C, same as the tank tab. Then we have the commander infantry, the commander in the M20, and the M3 command. Anti-tank tab. Bazookas, only available from phase B. So 12, 18 availability in C. Then we have the M1 gun. Two cards available of these, 4, 8, and 12 availability with that one vet. Then we've got the M5 gun with one vet, which is going to kind of supplement your lack of tanks in phase B. And you've also got the M10 uh, destroyer. So you do have access to these at least uh, to supplement your tanks in phase B. Then Frontier, you are kind of stuck with the M16 MGMC and the Bofors. Uh, these M16 MGMCs have been improved in their effectiveness. Like the quad 50 cal vehicles in general have like all been improved. Um, so... It does potentially give you a reason to use them in phase A, but for the most part, you're probably just going to want to bring in bofers um, and potentially even upvet it in phase A. Then we got artillery. Uh, artillery here is pretty chonky, honestly. You've got the spotters, though, to begin with, which is your radio recon. You can bring these in in A, so they kind of like make up for your lack of uh, recon infantry in phase A. Um, you've got 60 mil mortars. Available in B and C. Artillery leaders are only available from B and C. The 81mm mortars, um, these are only available from B and C. So you can't really use those like early mortar support, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can, however, bring in the M2A1 howitzers in phase A. So that's probably going to be your likely choice instead. Then there's M mortar 107mm available in B. Um, and C. That's uh, 8 and 12 availability on those. The priests are available from phase B. 4 and 6 availability. 
Um, the mortar carrier is still available in A actually, so you can bring that in instead of the 81mm mortars, which is probably going to be the choice actually instead of the 105. Now, what's the rate of fire on this 105? Eh, it's actually not too bad. But then you've got the big boys. There are three cards of the M1A1 long toms. Again, only available from phase B, you can't bring one in phase A, but two and four availability, like in a long game, these could certainly start raining hell on your enemy. And then finally, we have two cards of off map and uh, failing to correct the mistakes of the first SSB, we have more ginormous off map in phase A and not just one, but two cards of it. Now, because it's 356 uh, millimeter artillery, you get uh, two strikes per card. Not sure necessarily if this one's this one won't be as bad as the first SSB at all, uh, because the 356 mil it's great at pinning stuff down, but it's actually not as lethal as you think it might be because the dispersion is quite big. So unless it like gets lucky and directly hits something, it's not actually going to do a lot of damage. Moving into the air tab, we've got the F5A Recon Lightning, available in A, B, and C, 2, 4, and 6 availability. A20G comes with the 6 Browning 50 cals in the nose, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then it also has the 12 110 millimeter rockets. This is a really nice strafing aircraft, great for taking out support weapons and it has a decent amount of resilience too. Then there's the P-51 Mustangs as your fighters, four available in A, 8 in B, and 12 in C. P-38s with the 110mm rockets. Uh, these things are very fragile, but you can get three of them in phase A, which is quite nice. And they do also have like a really nice forward armament of the 20 mil plus four 50 cows. So their strafing cap capability is also very strong, like the A20G. But yeah, three available in A, four in B, and six in C. The bad resilience, yeah, it's really sad that that lets them down so much. This card, A20G is with 454 kilogram bombs. Uh, four of those, one available in A, two available in B, four available in C. Then we've got the P38s with the 227 kilogram bombs. One available in A, two in B, and four in C. If there was like two available in A of these, it might be quite nice for them to be used. Uh, but you do get two cards of these with 227 kilogram bombs. So that's nice. Two, four, and six availability. Um, this is actually a pretty decent bomber for the early game. So yeah, that's your lot. Nothing crazy in the defense tab. Let's go ahead and build a deck. The one thing that is crazy about this division is how like egregious the deployment locking is or like the phase locking is in this particular one but let's see what we can do so we'll definitely have m8s in phase a the other thing we're going to do is have spotters in phase a for sure uh then we want scouts in phase b or recon in phase b with m20s i'm probably going to do recon in phase b with m20s and honestly that might be it for my recon tab then we've got uh, Assault Busters, we'll want them, we want Assault Teams, we want Assault Breaches. I guess the one thing about this division is it does make it very easy for you to build. And uh, we'll do Engine Leaders in Phase A and Rifle Leaders in Phase B. And then, I'm trying to think what else we need. We don't have like any AT Infantry. Which is a little bit sketchy. Um, we can't bring in the bazookas in phase A. We can't bring in any of these don't have bazookas anyway. Does any of this have bazookas in like regardless? I guess the leaders have bazookas, right? Hmm. Maybe you need to bring the assault leader just because it has bazookas. Eh, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Probably won't matter that much. Probably. Or do you rifles late? Might actually upvert those. Early engineers or early rifles in phase B with engineers. 
we'll do a phase C card of engineers like so. And that should be fine, I think, for the infantry tab. For the tank tab, definitely want to bring in the M4DDs up vetted, bring in some M5A1s, and then you're going to want to bring some more M3A1s up vetted and in phase C. Definitely want the M7DDs. Almost tempted to bring two cards of these. M3 howitzers in phase B. I definitely want to bring in the M4105s. I would bring these in in phase B, but since we can't, we'll bring them in phase A. It's one thing that's going to be absolutely wild about this division. You're going to just like bring stuff in phase A because you can't bring it in phase B. So you're just going to like cuck yourself on availability on purpose. I uh, will definitely bring in those M5 guns in phase B. We got M1 guns in phase A. I think these are faster than the GMC. Yeah, so you probably you always want to make sure you're using the ducks when they're available. Bazooka's MB is probably still a good choice. And maybe M10s in B, just in case. Then for artillery, early game off map spam. I don't know if I want to go for these over the mortar carriers. Like they are pretty cheap. I think they're pretty good. And then in phase B, maybe we do. M7s, or maybe mortars. Let's do 107s. And then the air tab. Bring these in phase A. Thinking like A20Gs would actually not be a bad idea in phase A either. Pretty nice bombing load for phase A. And uh, with some P40 or P51s, uh, we'll upvert them slightly. Yeah, that'll do. And then anti air. I completely skipped over anti air. Oh, this is one thing that's uh, interesting about this division is the Bofors can be brought in with the M16 half uh, tractor. This is, uh, I almost forgot about this. Really, really good. Um, combination because this is the same as this um but cheaper <laughs> it's like literally half the price so yeah this is a nice combination so in phase a you probably just want to do something like that and then um yeah phase b you can upvet them and just have all the aa you need for the rest of the game uh what else could we put in i need supply don't i I don't know if uh, that's going to be enough supply. We need a commander as well. Uh, let's go infantry commander. Yeah, maybe we don't need the M4105. Tough to say. It's tough to say. This might be okay. If I bring these with supply, that could be enough. It does make them very expensive to pick up in phase A though, that's for sure. Now the hardest thing about this division is going to be remembering that your recon infantry are in the artillery tab. <laughs> but otherwise, that is it for this one. The big red one. It's a uh, very interesting division because of the phase locking um and in that way i kind of like it it carries over its characteristics from Star division normally 44 and i would say it's a relatively well balanced american division now, of course in this case i have taken both of the cards in half off map in phase a this isn't something that i would necessarily recommend this is something you could definitely switch out for other units and other tabs and such uh, maybe like invest more into your aircraft or something for the late game but uh yeah i think it's a it's a fun division 
it might struggle in team games against heavier armor, especially like late game. But otherwise, you got a pretty strong recon tab, especially in the early game uh, with those units that I uh, chose. Um, you've got enough, you know, medium and light armor support to get you off the ground. And then into phase B, you're just relying on your like M5 guns and M10s to take care of heavier targets. And you just continue your infantry dominance due to that decent veterancy that you get. Um, and then what I would also say is like the best choice here would be removing this card. I just do it anyway. And then we pop in this one in phase C and that kind of gives you another unit that can kill heavy tanks. Yeah, cool. That'll do. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look at the first infantry. Of course, as always, let me know what you think of the division down in the comments below. But that is it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.